<sighs> hey everybody, Rose of the Rascal 15 here. And I got to be honest with you everybody, okay? I need to say something that I was hoping would be A, either not as bad as everybody was saying it was, or B, I was thinking, you know what? There were leaks online, there were spoilers online for the story for The Last of Us Part 2, and that maybe people were exaggerating on how terrible it is cuz I was telling people around the internet and all my friends that maybe we got to wait till the game comes out. And I was doing that too. I was being pretty patient. I was saying, okay, we cannot assume that the story is going to be garbage because of leaks. We have to play the entire game and see the full picture. Maybe it'll make sense once we see the entire game in its entirety. And let me tell you something. I don't think I have, I don't think I've ever been this disappointed with a story for a big franchise such as this. I don't think I don't think maybe since like Mass Effect 3 has a story ended on such a sour note where you're like what was that conclusion? What was the point of everything? For those who don't know, The Last of Us Part 2 just came out, I want to say June 19th this past Friday, and everybody was looking forward to it. It's been People have been waiting seven years for this story to be uh, continued. And in my opinion, uh, I don't know if it should have been continued because... Whew, um, this game pulls a Alien 3 on everybody who was a big fan of this franchise. And what I mean by that is, for those who don't know, in the second Alien film, which is called Aliens... You fall in love with these characters, and by the end of it, you're happy with the conclusion because, you know, it's... You know, it's a, it's a, you know, like, the, the characters go on this dangerous adventure, they win at the end, and it ends on a happy, somewhat ambiguous note. You're like, okay, that was a satisfying ending. Then comes the sequel, where it kills a main character off very unceremoniously in the first couple of, you know, minutes. And then you're led to believe that, oh, it was all because the main character uh what this was coming to the main character because of the past game they were uh, very unsmart they they left their tracks open so because of that they get killed and it's justified according to this new story because it was meant to happen because Joel from the last game was actually the villain and i i just can't believe that this entire sequel wants you to believe that Joel was actually the the villain of the last game and that Ellie tries to take revenge on Joel throughout this game and the game wants you to think that Ellie is also a villain too because all these acts of violence she's doing all these terrible killings of this character named Abby which was actually the daughter of uh, a surgeon that Joel killed in a hospital in the last game to save Ellie turns out that she wants revenge Abby and wants to kill Joel and she does and in the game you're supposed to like Abby because it was justified because Joel killed her dad but Abby does a lot of terrible things I just don't understand why you would want to fall in love with a character that kills one of the main characters that we fell in love with, and now you're trying to make it seem like the last character from the, you know, Joel from the first game seemed like he was the villain, and you want to make Ellie seem like she's also a bad guy. Why do you want to take the main characters we love from the first game and make them villains, and make this new character who no one gives a shit about, who's also just as bad as these characters, and you want us to have sympathy for Abby? I can't believe this game is getting 10 out of 10s, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just shocked at how fan fiction level of writing that this story is. I just, I can't believe it. I just can't believe that the director of the game, Neil Druckmann, think that, thinks that this is really good writing and that this is, and he knows that this is going to divide fans. He's aware that, okay, what I'm about to do, it's not going to be for everybody. And you know what? To be fair, to look at the glass half full, I respect directors that take chances with sequels that like to do something different. They're not trying to copy the first game, and I appreciate that. I like it when directors do that. But when you make a sequel that people have been waiting years for, and you disrespect the last game by making the main characters seem like all their actions were for nothing, and that everything that you were led to believe was all a bunch of bullshit, then I'm sorry, I have to step my foot and say, no, this is not a good way to continue the story. 
I think I can vouch for everybody out there that was a fan of the first game and say that we wanted a story where Joe and Ellie would be older and we would see more of their adventures continue. We would see the characters develop more. We would see what an older Ellie would, you know, be like around Joel and how she would, you know, as she gets older, you know, there's a lot of uh, more turmoil and a lot more lessons to be learned. We want to see that relationship with Joel and Ellie uh, continue and for them to develop as characters that we fall in love with. Instead, you kill these characters, well, you kill one of the characters, Joel, and you make Ellie into something that I can't even believe is Ellie because now you're trying to make me believe that she's this, you know, disgusting, you know, killing machine that just won't stop until she gets her revenge. And then when she does get her revenge, she's like, no, it's okay. Because the ending of the game is Ellie uh, letting Abby go because, just because she feels as though she gets a flashback, Ellie, that she remembers Joel lying to her about saving humanity and that Ellie gets mad because she tells Joel, I was supposed to die in that hospital. Why did you save me? I was supposed to die for the humanity, you know, to save humanity. And she goes, you're an asshole and I can never forgive you. And that's how the game ends. It's like you're going to end the game by disrespecting everything that the first game did. And then Ellie loses, by the way, because she loses all her friends and she's alone. No lessons are learned. This story is, it makes me, it makes me angry. And maybe that was the intention of the director, but... That doesn't mean it's good. Just because the director wants you to feel depressed and mad and just really pissed off with these choices doesn't mean it's good. So for anybody who hasn't bought the game, I would say wait for a price drop and maybe you can play it and give your opinion. But in my opinion, don't buy this game because the story is so disrespectful to the first one and I'm really mad at Naughty Dog. This is not a 10 out of 10 game at all, okay? It's a 6 out of 10 just for that story alone. And what I mean by that it's a 6 out of 10 is because the gameplay is great. It's still, the, it's still Naughty Dog. I mean, Naughty Dog made Uncharted. It made Jack and Daxter. It made Crash Bandicoot. These, these are people, employees, a studio that knows how to make a good game when you give them the budget, the resources, and the writing. And here's the thing, the writing. I have been a fan of some of Naughty Dog's stories, okay? I always had a kid. I always liked the Jack and Daxter stories. I've always been a fan of the Uncharted games, especially for the writing. I love the writing in the Uncharted games. I felt Uncharted 4 ended on such a great note. So for The Last of Us to end on this note just makes me more depressed because Uncharted ended on such a good note that sadly The Last of Us didn't end on a good note. And again, I give this a 6 out of 10 realistically because the gameplay is good. And the graphics are phenomenal and the voice acting's good. But what does it all matter when the story is this bad? It's this fan fiction level of awfulness that I just, I'm shocked that the director thought this was good. I mean, kudos to the director if he thought this was good. And I give him respect for having the balls to make a story this divisive. But I'm sorry. This is probably like one of the most disrespectful sequels I've seen for any video game in a long freaking time. I'm shocked that this is what we got. So, yes, everybody. If you haven't bought in the game yet, like I said, I would say wait for a massive price drop. I, I just... If you're going to go in for the story, don't. You're going to be very disappointed. But if you want to play it for the experience, wait for a price drop. Do not give this company 60 bucks. I hope they do better next time. I really hope they do.